So GitHub Copilot made this frequency spectrogram view for us. The problem with it is that it's only accessible by a different URL, so not the not within the same window. So actually, you have to go to where the URL is slash spectrogram, and we'll show the spectrogram in a separate plotly window, which obviously not quite what we want. But uh, yeah, I think that's the whole data loaded, the whole hundred seconds. So you can see the seizure over there. Yeah, the colors are not great. For seizure, you kind of need more focus in the lower frequencies, but actually have the frequency scale uh, logarithmic. Right, so that's how it's loading. Yes, yeah, so those uh, inputs uh, do not take effect over the spectrogram. Yes, yeah, so we want to show the spectrogram in the HTML. So in the HTML, we should have a spectrogram plotly container. The plots wrapper. Why do we have it uh, twice? Is there something wrong with that? Plots wrapper, plot container. We have the raw signal, the frequency spectrum. We have the output container. Okay, this is the wrong uh, place for it. Uh, we want it over here somewhere. Uh, do we need to refresh this page? Now in JavaScript code. To generate and display the spectrogram will depend on the specifies specifics of your EG, how you want to process it. You might need to use a library like SciPy. Once you have the spectrum data, you can use plotly.js to create the plot. Here's the general example of how to do it. We have a get the data, we have a fetch data and render. Okay, this is actually changing. Okay, so instead of a separate uh, window, Still using a get that. Uh, okay, let's clear this up. Sounds like I need to explain the file first. So it's actually so that GitHub Copilot has access to it. Okay, then we have the JavaScript Copilot explain this. This is mainly so that Copilot has access to the files. Okay, so it's generating. So what we want really is have an option to replace the spectrum by a spectrogram, which is much more detailed. JavaScript, EG data visualization begins. Yes, fetch data and render function is the core of the script. Okay, fetch, fetch and render. Okay. Explain this. Okay, we need to get the names. Do we have a runtime error or something? How is this still working? Right, closing that window didn't stop the app from working. Now it's working. Okay. Regards spectrogram. How to show it in the HTML? We don't want to use an image file. So on a spectrum image file, you can convert the basics for encoding streak and bend directly into HTML. That's still using an image, isn't it? We just use plotly or mat because we're using both, aren't we? Yeah, this is actually plotting the thing in a separate window. But how about plotly js? Yeah, we need to send the data to Flask. So we probably won't be using that, which is okay. It's actually currently working, even though it's displaying the thing in a separate window. But uh, so we already have JSON file imported. Now in spectrogram, it should be at the bottom here. Just place them side by side for a sec. If there's no WAV file, the data is already loaded. Do you have access to the files or not? Never too sure. Uh, control I uh, use that uh, it is already loaded. Yet yeah, it's hard to troubleshoot this way, but it looks legit. Yeah, it's using the data variable, so I'll accept that. 
Okay, it's returning a HTML and JSON. So in the HTML, we should already have that MinJS. Is that what it's using? Yeah, latest MinJS. Why can't just not using JavaScript for this? Don't get it. Why is JS code not in the EGJS? Yeah, that's fine. So in HTML, we have a section for this spectrogram plot. Should be underneath there. Spectrogram plot. They explain this. It's mainly, I'm mainly doing this so Copart has access to, to that line. Okay, how did this JavaScript became so complicated? Um, spectrum. No, there is spectrum. How about spectrogram? Okay, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, how do I add? What did it change? No, that's not what I meant. Okay, it doesn't have the context this thing. Um, let's try GPT. Start a new chat, GPT-4. And no, that's this guy. It's doing some rubbish. Yeah, continue reading the code. Don't generate anything yet. Let's see, sometimes it ignores this instruction. Yep, that's good. This one should also have this. Read the code, don't generate anything at the bottom. That's great. Okay, so the main thing is that the spectrogram is not showing in the HTML. There are two routes to spectrogram, which might be causing confusion. Flask might only be using the first one declared, rendering the second one unreachable. Ensure each route in a Flask app has a unique endpoint. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I want to do the second one. To display plots on a web page, you typically need to use a JavaScript library like Plotly, JS, which can be integrated into the HTML template. Okay, that's good advice. Yeah, we haven't changed the JavaScript yet. If using Plotly in the web page, you need to write JavaScript code that defines the data structure for a spectrogram and then calls Plotly. New plot, to render it within a specified less than div greater than element. Right. Have to do that. Template rendering. The flask group for the spectrogram should pass the necessary data to the template rendering function in a format that can be used directly in the template. Okay, let's do that. Let's go with that one for now. And then in HTML. Hey, wait a sec. So we have one HTML. And we should have the file structure. No, we don't have the file structure. The script should be separate. Okay, so first of all, it's getting a bit mixed up we have the spectrogram plot let's do js first no let's do html first sorry for that how to change this code in terms of the spectrogram then we do the same with javascript yeah we want to use javascript to render it is step by step okay we already did this but the same we're changing it again it's changing it. Yeah, it's actually better because it's not generating a HTML file, it's just generating JSON data. This is better. Yeah, no, in your script, script, JS file, or within a less than script greater than tag in your HTML, add a function to fetch the spectrogram data and render it. Yeah, we'd call it. You can call fetch and display spectrogram when the page loads or when a user interacts with a control that should update the spectrogram, such as the channel selector or a button. Yeah, it can just be placed on there. The, the function is not giving me any errors. And in the HTML, we have division. Yep, that's right. Make sure you have included the script. JS file after the plotly latest dot bin. JS script tag in your HTML head or before the closing less than body greater than tag. Let's do a proper restart. Don't even see the, even the, the placeholder for the plot. Is this clearing them somehow? Yeah, let's go back to GPT. To see the spectrogram. Sorry, super long prompt. Hope we get penalized for it, but I need to keep the context intact. So that's the actual JavaScript that we need to change. I think I stuffed something up in it. It's this bit here, is a Let's do just remove that. It should be at the beginning of fetch and render. Should be the end. Okay, so we don't need that doesn't matter what the function is, is it? Function uh, fetch and render should be at the bottom. Place the second function over here and make a 
call after the function and if and uh, this uh, well right it's actually working it's displaying the spectrogram for the whole hundred seconds the description is overlapping like that this spectrogram is displayed okay but it's using the entire data you can just say this because hopefully it, if it understands the context it should realize that we want to link to those controllers as well doing the same thing yeah, it's having all the context and everything which is awesome so i don't need to do that anymore do i a fast scroller do i add it as a right, let's change it okay you yeah, select the windows as a 100 it should really uh, go to the beginning of the file set this to around 50 well yeah it's working pretty well the amplitude's here it's the bird the axis the color there are uh, auto scaling but uh, looks pretty good you had a better better one in this uh, eg review which was a bit heavy still loading but it had this nice bit there it was quite handy yeah that was nice yeah, we'll see how we introduce that. Uh, should we get rid of the frequency spectrum? So some of those controls we don't need. Text of the it's really weird. It's putting the text on the side. Why? Maybe that's what that sentence was there for. This command and it should be after over here perhaps. Yeah, clear something. So this better. Just get rid of that. Uh, we also don't need log spectrum. A uh, linear log yeah, could change that scale. Just happen to to those. Let's display the game. What? I called elsewhere. No, it's the problem. How to remove? Want to remove this second part? Well, everything else is still shown correctly. Currently, it's messing up those numbers there. No, what's up with that? Yeah, delete that. Find the element in CSS. So we haven't touched a CSS file in a, in a while. Copy it quickly. So what's up? With a couple of options of the element JavaScript. Right. To fix the JavaScript. Yeah, that should still. All right. Now this one's working as well. It's good. Yeah, it's a bit grainy. Should be switching. Yeah, the wavelet dim noise doesn't do anything at the moment. Let's go by by what? What is it doing? Yeah, it's not actually changing anything. It doesn't actually seem to do anything. Just script. No, it's actually changing the thing to change it to know the other applications. I think I only have the one. This wavelet dim noise thing. Arguments get just. Find it like throughout the project. Then I also have it in the noise. We'll set it as well. One run at the moment. We'll assume. We'll assume it's working okay. Not testing is a great idea, isn't it? Well, because we're essentially testing the same thing over here. It's working okay. Now the spectrogram is only being affected by the scroller. In the frequency scale to change spectrogram y axis should be straightforward. I don't know. Window size HTML the steps are one, so why I actually have to click, -click it? Okay, so JavaScript fetch and display spectrogram after fetching the data. For fetching the data and within that, then where you process and plot the data. It's ready. Type in trace the comma there. Element is not change function. It's that of that doing this. No, it's working okay. The whole spectrum can be removed in HTML. Get rid of that. Okay, now we don't see what. That's not cool. This one that's showing okay. Linear log, log is default, that's good. 
add this filter or that was only affecting the EG spectrum okay get rid of it here I don't know input uh, okay this still doesn't work okay that's working and yeah, that's okay that's for the denoising frequency scale is working where's this coming from show it oh, I need this yeah log is default that's fine that's okay frequency scale is okay channel number right now the main thing is the the EG spectrogram thing called a plotly if just quick we have it over there we need to update and inputs change currently it's only updating when the file scroller is being used this function should fetch the latest data using the current settings and re-render the spectrogram plot accordingly yeah okay, how to do it here's a step-by-step -step guide to updating the spectrogram plotly div when input changes do i need a separate I don't think i need a separate thing Create a function to update the spectrogram. I already have a function for that. The whole seizure spectrogram in the frequency domain, by the way. So we really, when we have the window size at the full 100, this should in theory not be able to scroll through the file because it's the whole segment is loaded. And this is how it looks like on uh, different uh, channels. On some channels you see uh, more, on some channels you see less of it. And there's a problem with this one because of that uh, spike there. So also this is updating with input instead of change. A uh, channel selector with change window size with input we have the size add change this to input quickly just to see yeah it's becoming much uh, slower and i can hear my um, server is going yeah there's much more data in there and becomes less responsive as well i just uh, stick to change it's kind of nice to see it changing live, but then it's taking a toll on my server. I'll get a huge uh, electricity bill. So it might actually in this spectrogram as well. Yeah, do a change there. Yeah, so I actually have to de-click, release the button, release the mouse button for uh, the changes to take effect. Now this spectrogram also should change when you turn the noise on and off. As in you don't turn them on and off because they're both displayed on the EG signal chart but for the spectrogram it will uh, display one and then the other yeah that's the um, linear frequency scale that's a logarithmic for the seizure on channel 7 that's what it looks like channel 11 so now a channel get the picture so the only thing that is um, the only controller that working with um, input instead of change is the scroller all other controls you actually have to release the button for them to uh, change anything yeah log log scale for the frequency here is default because you can see better uh, especially when there's a seizure what's going on so this is reloading the page this is default this is just showing you the low frequency component uh, because the colors there are automatically scaled yeah it's getting up to six thousand during seizure and only fifteen hundred when there is no seizure. Just give me these errors at the edges. We'll fix it a bit later. Yeah, so you see here you have this nice and stable uh, line through the seizures, but that's not always the case. If you want to train something, a seizure detector algorithm, you will use that line. Problem is it's not always there that's the end of the seizure as well but yes there's higher energy in the low frequency components that's for sure uh, throughout the seizure yeah this channel 7 is not great as well some of them will be better than others check something a uh, channel like the window size yeah that's fine that's what's it's the three things that's changing the spectrogram a uh, yeah, channel number a uh, file scroller and window size and frequency scale of course but that's done in a different way okay the spectrogram should also be affected by wavelet denoise because when it's on it should be taking denoised signal and when it's off 
this background should show the original one. Uh, how do we turn this into a prompt? The noise would also affect uh, the spectrogram. We might not prime it with any more information. See if it gets the context and be able to tell straight away if it uh, understands what we mean. If you want the wavelet denoise control to also change the spectrogram, you need to ensure that the event listener for the wavelet denoise checkbox calls the fetch and display spectrogram function with the current input values. Here's how you can set up the event listener for the wavelet denoise checkbox. Yeah, I'm not entirely convinced it understands what we are trying to do. Yeah, we already have that, pretty sure. The checkbox state can be included in the fetch request as a parameter, and the server side logic should then apply the wavelet denoising based on this parameter before sending back the data. Yeah, I'm still not convinced it understands. <laughs> With the wavelet denoise checkbox linked to your fetch and display spectrogram function, toggling the checkbox should now update the spectrogram according to the denoising setting. Remember to handle the checkbox state both on the client side when sending a request and on the server side when processing the request. All right, so the question is, well, how the spectrogram will update uh, in relation to wavelet the noise on and off. I mean, we know what the answer for that should be. So we ask what will happen when the wavelet the noise input is toggled, how it will change the spectrogram. Yeah, we also want to know uh, why the spectrogram looks so uh, um, granular, so low, low res. Uh, we had something like this in uh, LabVIEW before, so surely yeah, we could just change the settings. Check it out straight away. Actually using SciPy. What are we using? Don't think we use this function as well, do we? Yeah, this is coming from a plot. Uh, where is it? PLT matplotlib. There's a function called uh, spectrum. This is the one we are using. I don't think so. Surprised we're not using the scipy thing. Okay, this is the actual function. Yeah, we're using signal spectrogram. Yes, that's what it does. And signal. Okay, it's a scipy function. It's a MATLAB style IIR filter. Now, the actual uh, parameter can be returning a one sided. That's okay. As the trend function in build. Yeah, this window, uh, window, window, window. Okay, this is a GitHub compiler suggesting stuff. That's the segment. Optional length of each segment default defaults to none, but window is string. What tuple is set to 56? Number of points to overlap for a window of 10. But add uh, more of these parameters. Same. Inputs by 